Welcome back everyone, it's me, Matt, with you again today. There's not many aircraft that I get excited about or think that actually look totally beautiful. The F-22 is certainly my favorite fighter jet out there, but this is probably a close second in terms of my Russian fighter jets that I love. I'm a massive fan of the MiG-29, but the Su-34 fullback is certainly close second. It is an absolutely gorgeous fighter jet. Just look at the size of this thing too. It is a absolute beast twin cockpit bomber. And if you are into aviation and military aviation specifically, you should probably know that this absolute beast is known as the platypus or the angry duckling because that nose literally looks like a duck bill. And we're going to get into a deep dive of this jet today. But before we do, let me know what your favorite fighter bomber is in the comment section. I love to read your comments as much as I possibly can and if I haven't responded to you don't take it personally. I just don't have the time to respond to you all but I really do enjoy being able to interact with you all in the comments and discussing military equipment that you have a fascination for and of course if you want me to review upcoming equipment in videos I'm going to make in the future let me know of your suggestions. This was actually a suggestion from my following so thank you for suggesting this fighter jet because I actually didn't know much about this fighter jet because Sequoia, when they make their fighter jets, all look quite similar. But this one with that prominent nose and double cockpit is fairly obvious. It's a totally different fighter jet to some of the other Sequoia fighter jets out there, like the Su-35. And of course, the numbers being so close together, people do get confused. But the fullback is certainly a fighter bomber and is designed to deliver a huge amount of firepower. And firepower does this thing bring. It is an absolute behemoth when it comes to ordnance that this thing can drop and it does very well at also surviving in contested airspaces which at the moment is a hot topic in the debate of the Ukrainian war which we're not going to get into. I really don't want to be formed into the arguments around whether or not the number of jets have been shot down or not. I will safely say that there's a lot of debate in terms of the numbers of them being shot down and the involvement in the war but we're focusing today on its capability. So let's start at the beginning. The Su-34's lineage traces back to the legendary Su-27 flanker, one of the most capable air superiority fighters of the Cold War. But the Soviet Union needed something more, a fast, long-range, high-endurance strike aircraft to replace the aging Su-24 fencer bombers. Enter the Su-27IB project, later designated the Su-34. First flown in 1990, right before the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Su-34's development was quite slow due to, of course, as always, funding issues. But after years of refinement, it officially entered Russian Air Force service in 2014. Its most distinctive feature, of course, is that side-by-side -side cockpit and that platypus-shaped nose, which houses the powerful radar system needed for this aircraft's technology that it is trying to integrate for the modern aviation standard. The Su-34 was designed to bridge the gap between fighter and bomber, maintaining the speed and agility of the flanker while being able to carry heavy payloads over long distances. It was meant to be Russia's answer to the beautiful F-15E Strike Eagle, capable of striking enemy positions day and night in any weather conditions. Now the Su-34 is big, really big, and it's so big in fact that it even needs a parachute to help slow it down to reduce the overall strain on the airframe and on the braking system to slow this beast on the runway. At 77 feet long with a wingspan of 48 feet, the Su-35 is a beast, but its twin AL-31FM engines provide plenty of thrust and it needs that thrust to pull the payloads that it's trying to pull. It can reach speeds of Mach 1.8 at an altitude that has a service ceiling of 56,000 feet, but what really sets this aircraft apart is its long-range endurance, which of course is required for Russia's vast airspace. Unlike traditional fighter jets, the Su-34 is built for extended missions. It can carry up to 27,000 pounds of internal fuel, giving it a combat radius of 600 miles without refueling. It also has in-flight refueling probes, making it able to stay airborne for up to 10 hours if needed. Another key feature is its actual armor protection, a rarity among modern fighters. The cockpit is shielded with titanium armor, allowing it to withstand some small arms fire and even missile fragments. This makes it ideal for low attack runs, which is something Russian doctrine has traditionally emphasized on. The aircraft's design also helps with survivability, and unlike most bombers, which rely purely on speed or stealth, the Su-34 can actually dogfight if required. It retains the agility of that Su-27 and can engage aerial threats only if required, but it's not really destined for that. It's primarily designed as a strike platform or as a bomber. 
But all those specs are just numbers. We need to kind of break down what the firepower this aircraft can actually bring, and it needs it. It is designed to support ground forces primarily, and it boasts 12 external hardpoints and can carry over 17,000 pounds of ordnance. That's more than some of the dedicated bombers that exist, and it also features a 30mm GSH-31 cannon with about 180 rounds inside of there, basically for defense if necessary. In terms of missiles, the Su-34 is equipped with a mix of air-to-air, -air, air to ground and anti-ship weapons. It can carry the R-73 or the AA-11 Archer, a short-range heat-seeking missile for self-defense, the R-77 AA-12 Adder, a medium-range active radar missile similar to the AMRAAM, the KH-29, KH-31 and KH-59. These are air-to-ground missiles allowing it to engage hardened bunkers, radars and enemy ships, and the KAB-500 and KAB-1500 precision-guided bombs used for surgical ground strikes. One of these standout features is its ability to strike from long distance, reducing the risk of being intercepted by enemy defenses. However, combat reports suggest that the Su-34 may have been forced to drop dumb bombs due to a shortage of guided munitions that the aircraft was designed to fire. This has actually now made them a lot more vulnerable to short-range air defenses, and a problem I'll discuss a little later. Advanced firepower, though, is only as good as the systems that guide it, so let's talk a bit about the avionics and electronic warfare capabilities of this aircraft. At the heart of the fullback's combat effectiveness is the Leonietz V004 Passive Phased Radar Array, housed in the aircraft's signature platypus-shaped nose. Unlike older Soviet bombers, this multi-mode radar allows the Su-34 to engage targets in air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes simultaneously. It features terrain following and terrain avoidance capabilities, meaning the aircraft can fly very dangerously low to the ground using the landscape as cover while still locking onto targets. For precision targeting, the Su-34 is equipped with the UOMZ Electro-Optical Fire Control System and the Geophysiska FLIRPOD, providing infrared targeting and real-time tracking of both ground and aerial threats. This is crucial for high-precision strikes, especially in very low visibility conditions. To defend itself against modern threats, and there are plenty looking for the Su-34, is it equipped with an advanced electronic countermeasure suite including jammers, chaff dispensers, and Russia has also experimented with external jamming pods that could be mounted on the aircraft's hardpoints, further increasing its survivability in heavily contested airspaces. A unique feature of the Su-34 is its rear-facing radar as well, mounted on the aircraft's tail boom. This gives the pilot and co-pilot situational awareness of threats even behind them, allowing them to deploy countermeasures or even engage enemy aircraft if necessary. But while the Su-34 is packed with a lot of gizmos and gadgets and advanced systems, how is it actually performed in real-world combat? Since its conception in 2014, it wasn't long before it saw combat. One of the first major deployments was in Syria in 2015, where Russia used the Su-34 to strike terrorist positions and opposition forces. The aircraft actually proved very effective at delivering precision-guided bombs against targets in cities like Aleppo and Iblib. With its long-range capability and in-flight refueling, it could fly deep into enemy territory without needing to return to base. However, the real test of course came in Ukraine and is still being tested to this day. In the early stages of the 2022 invasion, the Su-34 was deployed extensively for tactical bombing missions, but here's where things started to a little bit fall apart. Some reports suggest, notice how I'm saying suggest because I cannot confirm all these details, that Russian pilots lacked access to sufficient precision guided munitions, forcing them to drop unguided bombs at close range, which was a very dangerous and outdated tactic considering some of the western munitions or even eastern munitions that were provided to the Ukrainian military. This made the Su-34 very vulnerable to Ukrainian air defense including man pads and surface air missile systems. Some analysts estimate that Russia may have lost up to 10% of its entire Su-34 fleet in Ukraine, and this is a massive blow considering its importance in the Russian Air Force and strike capability. Despite these losses, Moscow continues to rely on the Su-34 as its primary strike fighter slash bomber. But what about future upgrades and exports? Can the fullback evolve to modern threats? Well, yes, they are certainly pumping a lot of technology and money into this aircraft. Originally, Russia planned to build only 200 Su-34s, but economic sanctions and production delays have impacted these numbers. As of today, approximately only 140 aircraft have been delivered. 
In 2020, Russia announced the Su-34M, an upgraded variant featuring improved avionics, a new electronic warfare suite, and enhanced precision strike capabilities. However, delays and funding shortages have slowed down production significantly. But what about the export of this aircraft? Unlike the Su-30 and Su-35, the Su-34 has not seen widespread foreign adoption. Algeria, Vietnam and Iran have expressed interest, but so far, Russia has not exported the aircraft. One of the biggest reasons, cost and specialization. The Su-34 is designed specifically for Russia's needs, not other countries. Focusing on low-level strikes and deep penetration missions, something many countries rely on Western or Chinese aircraft for instead. With the rise of stealth technology and drone warfare, is the Su-34 even having a future? Or is it already outdated? Well, I would say completely not. This is a very formidable strike aircraft, and it does have a few fair shares of weaknesses, and one of the biggest issues, of course, is stealth. Yes, unlike the F-35 and even China's J-20, the Su-34 is supposed to be highly visible on radar, making it very vulnerable to modern air defense systems. Stealth is always a conversation that I hate getting into, because some of you are complete nerds and know so much more about stealth than I do, but we have to be clear, this thing is certainly not designed to be stealthy, and I don't really think it needs to be. Numbers, unfortunately, is the game when it comes to an aircraft of this kind, and saturation of the airspace. When you have a number of these things flying, there's only so many anti-aircraft defenses you're going to have to knock them out. Another huge problem is the munitions shortages. This isn't the aircraft's fault. I mean, at the end of the day, it just comes down to economic sanctions and logistics. But Russia has really struggled to produce the vast amount of precision-guided bombs needed, and even the missiles, in sufficient numbers to really utilize what this aircraft was designed for. As a result, Su-34 pilots have been often forced to rely on outdated Soviet-era dumb bombs, and this is really, really dangerous. There's also combat losses. It's adding a little bit of, I guess, morale decline for pilots flying these aircraft. In Ukraine, with those high attrition rates, which have somewhat been reported but not confirmed, there's a lot of fear in pilots in being sent into close-range combat, and even though they're very rugged, aircraft, they cannot handle the amount of anti-air defense that is being pushed upon them. But they're being used in these roles anyway because they don't really have much choice. Finally, logistics and maintenance have proven to be a challenge on these aircraft. They require a lot of specialized infrastructure and spare parts, which have become harder and harder to source due to Western embargoes. Despite the challenges though, the Su-34 remains one of Russia's most important strike aircraft. On paper, it is an impressive fighter bomber, long-range capabilities, heavy armament, and advanced avionics, and it was designed to dominate the airspace. However, real-world performance has exposed quite a few of its weaknesses, and while the Su-34 has performed very well in Syria and given it a little bit of, I guess, prestige, in Ukraine it's shown it's very vulnerable. But the real question is, does it have a future in modern aviation warfare? With the rise of stealth aircraft, drone warfare, and advanced missile systems both air and ground, some argue that traditional strike fighters like the beautiful Su-34 are somewhat becoming obsolete. I would totally disagree, and I think only time will tell, but what do you think? Is the Su-34 still a viable fighter bomber, or is it a relic of the past? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section below. Please let me know what you thought of today's video. Do you think the Su-34 is a prominent fighter of today? Uh, of course, it's still quite new, I would say. It's been produced since the 1990s, and of course, its modern variant, the Su-34M, is coming up to an even newer status, but we have to remember that the next generation of fighters always being designed and being prepared, and Russia has done a lot of work to do that with some of its other platforms, but do we feel that this is a model that's being invested in for no real reason? What do you think? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you, and of course, if you did enjoy or dislike today's video, leave me a thumbs up or thumbs down button. Click there. It really does help the algorithm, which always fights me. And of course, if you do want to support my channel, please check out the description box below. Thank you all of you who've been supporting me in both the super chats on the chat feature and the comments. I really appreciate that. I uh, see a few donations coming by. And of course, through my Patreon and my PayPal, your financial commitments to my channel really help me able to produce more content and provide more work to allow me to give good content for what you want. And if you want to see, of course, equipment done on my channel in the future and me to talk about, just put it in the comment section. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.